sit, Daisy, give me your answer, do. I'm half crazy, all for the love of you. We can't have a stylish marriage, I can't afford a carriage. But you'd look sweet upon the seat of a bicycle built for two. Well, here we are again. Uh, to be frank, I'm glad you weren't here earlier in the afternoon as I botched this one horribly two times. Um, but hopefully the third time's the charm. Uh, I'm going to talk about Daisy World. Uh, Daisy World is a planet uh, that has, uh, is occupied by uh, two species, uh, two different species of daisies. One is black and one is white. Uh, Daisy World has a sun uh, that uh, provides Daisy World with uh, warmth uh, through luminosity, and we'll get into that a little bit. And finally, Daisy World uh, um, ha has a minimal atmosphere and has negligible greenhouse gases. So the surface temperature of Daisy World is determined largely uh, by the albedo of the, of the surface, the and the average temperature is some integral of that. Now Daisy World uh, comes out of um, some work uh, done by, well related to uh, the Gaia hypothesis that uh, uh, is associated with James Lovelock. Uh, there were two primary uh, um, co-authors on the papers I've looked at, a guy called Lenton and a guy called Watson, Andrew Watson, Watson and I think Timothy Lenton. Um, uh, and Daisy World has been the subject of a lot of, of work and writing and speculation and critiques and that sort of thing. Uh, it's associated with Gaia, but it's not, it isn't Gaia itself, A, and B, it's not Earth. Uh, it's, it's Daisy World. It's a weird planet that was made up um, by, by those folks. Uh, to show that uh, you can create relatively simple systems that uh, regulate themselves. And that self-regulation is homeostasis. Um, so what uh, 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 Lovelock and Lenton and uh, Watson set out to show is that you could create a simple planet that regulated it where life regulated the, the planet in such a way uh, that life thrives. Um, we'll talk about equilibrium in another uh, video, but um, um, there's an equilibrium here. Uh, the other, another example of homeostasis is um, the internal temperature of our own bodies. We regulate our, the way our bodies work, regulates that temperature to about 98.6 Fahrenheit, and uh, which I think is 37 uh, Celsius. All right, so um, the, the uh, I, I mentioned luminosity. Uh, Daisy World Sun uh, has a varying luminosity, which um, you can then show that uh, Daisy World regulates response to that. And we'll do a causal loop diagram that puts that in. Uh, negligible greenhouse gases. Now, because um, some daisies are white, uh, they reflect more sunlight, and so then the, uh, the local temperature uh, near white daisies is, tends to be a little lower than the average temperature of, of the planet. Uh, and because black daisies absorb uh, more energy because their albedo is uh, less, um, tends to, the local temperature around black daisies tends to be a little warmer, and that comes in um, later on. And of course, the, as I mentioned earlier, the surface temperature, the average surface temperature of the planet is some function of the albedo, which is uh, a simple, simple summation of the areas of, of black and white daisies, uh, roughly. All right, so let's get into it a little bit. Let's talk about these weird daisies. Um, we have uh, shown... Um, well, we, there's a stock of daisies. Um, 
on this planet. And for right now, I'm only t I'm both. These are things that both species have in common. Uh, we'll get into the differences between the black and the white ones in just a second. Uh, those daisies uh, grow, um, and their growth rate is a function of, of the local the local temperature, uh, and that fu function is called beta. And they die; they have a lifespan uh, that the technical papers call uh, gamma. Now, let's look a little bit at uh, how the daisies grow. So, beta here, uh, um, uh, uh, temperature here. Um, so, beta is how fast the daisies grow. Uh, it turns out that there's a minimum temperature below which they don't grow at all, uh, and there's a maximum temperature above which they don't grow, and there's an optimum temperature. And the function of their growth rate looks like that. So um, daisies grow the best when the, the temperature, the local temperature is at an optimum. And they don't grow at all at these sides. Uh, if things warm up uh, from that optimum temperature, they grow, uh, they grow less well. And similarly, if they cool down, they grow less well. Again, this becomes important um, in the next set of diagrams. All right, so that's daisies as a whole. Now let's, let's, let's look at... Um, um, the how the black and the white daisies uh, control the temperature on Daisy World. All right, that's that sheet. Now, uh, some a guy, a person called Andrew Ford, made this beautiful um, uh, causal loop diagram. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's let's do this. Uh, let's think about Daisy World in a causal loop sense. Two main bits of Daisy World right now are the fact that it has an albedo, uh, an average albedo, um, and it has uh, an average temperature. And those two are connected because as albedo uh, goes up, uh, well, they're connected this way. There's, the albedo controls the fraction of uh, luminosity that's absorbed. Um, and um, that combined with the incoming luminosity those two combine to give the actual absorbed I'm doing it over my shoulder here uh, luminosity which in turn controls the average temperature so as albedo goes up that is, as things get more white, the fraction of absorbed lum luminosity goes down because more is reflected out. As the fraction of um, luminosity uh, absorbed goes down, the amount actually absorbed goes down. So that's a plus. Got the, the two. Uh, I guess they're doing this. Uh, however, as incoming well, as incoming luminosity uh, uh, goes up, so does the absorbed. And as the absorbed luminosity uh, goes up, so too does the temperature. So albedo um, controls temperature in that, in that way. So now let's think about the, the, post, the, the, the uh, postulate. The hypothesis, the assertion, is that... Um, the black and the white daisies can can control albedo. So let's uh, let's let's think about this. Let's put our beta back up up here quickly, simply. 
beta t warming that way. So, um, so the t, the average temperature um, affects the temperature near white and the temperature near black. Um, and in fact, this is a, this is positive uh, in both cases. So uh, as the average temperature goes up, the temperature near the black and the white daisies go up. Now here's the here's the point where things depart. Um, because these are the white daisies locally have a higher albedo, that is they they reflect more, it tends to be a little cooler near white daisies. So white daisies tend to be a little bit more over here compared to the average temperature. So as the temperature near white daisies goes up, because it's just a little cooler locally, their beta goes up. So if their beta goes up, then the, air, the, the area, the white, we're going to call it white area, also goes up. Now the opposite is true for the black daisies because uh, locally, because black daisies, um, oh, did I do it wrong? No, no, I didn't, I'm still, <laughs> um, near black daisies is a little bit cooler. The temperature tends to be a little bit cooler. I did do it wrong, but so, so when the average uh, temperature goes up, near black daisies because it's a little cooler, their beta goes up. So this is actually the black case and the white case is over here. Um, so when the white case, the temperature goes up, their beta goes, uh, 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 no, no, I've got it right. I've got it right. Um, this is, I've been struggling with this all afternoon. It tends to be a little warmer near black daisies. So when the temperature goes up, their beta goes down. So as temperature goes up, the black area goes down. All right. So then if, if the black area goes down, then the average albedo goes up. And if the white area goes up, the average albedo goes up. So now we have a mechanism by which uh, uh, white and black daisies work to um, control the temperature of daisy world. Uh, and so now let's think what happens when luminosity changes. So if luminosity increases, then the absorbed luminosity goes up and the average temperature goes up. So let's do this one first. As the average temperature goes up, the temperature near the white daisies goes up, the white area goes up, the albedo goes up, and as a result, the fraction of luminosity absorbed goes down. And so the absorbed luminosity goes down and the average temperature goes down. So we have a, a balancing loop going that way. Similarly, if the incoming luminosity goes up, well, let's, yeah, we'll just do up. It's, then the absorbed luminosity goes up, the average temperature goes up, the temperature near the black daisies goes up, the black area goes down. So the albedo goes up. And so as the albedo goes up, the fraction of absorbed luminosity goes down absorbed luminosity goes down and the temperature goes down. So again, we have a balancing loop going that way. So Daisy World in causal loop diagram form looks like, like this. Um, it, it's, it should be, I mean, there's a sort of intuitiveness 
uh, to this one. Um, so, so, um, so that's how Daisy World works uh, in causal loop form. Now, I'm gonna for my next trick, uh, I'm gonna do this as a stock and flow diagram. So, what we, remember, what we're doing is we're showing that that life can form these loops that balance things. So let's do this. Let's do this in stock and flow uh, shape. I'm going to leave all our friend uh, Beta up there for for now because I'm probably going to get in trouble again here. So. Um, same thing, albedo and temperature. I'm going to draw albedo going this way because it's going to make the diagram neater in the long haul. So, um, so there's our two uh, two uh, things. So, um, so then we have the fraction uh, of L absorbed. That's controlled by the albedo, so the stock of albedo, how much albedo we have, uh, controls that. Um, we have luminosity as an external uh, thing. Those two come together. Uh, to give us our absorbed. Uh, so the mechanics here are the same. Now, let's keep our... So our absorbed luminosity goes to the input of temperature. Now, so that's like on Earth, that would be sunlight coming in. Uh, now temperature doesn't only go up, it goes down as well. Remember we radiate heat to space, so radiated heat. Okay, so that's that's how that that bit works. Now we, again we have to show that we can bring albedo up and down depending on, on <laughs> white and black daisies. So we also have a stock of white daisies and a stock of black daisies. Um, so this is uh, gamma. This is our friend beta. Same thing here, beta. Gamma. Now, um, the thing that controls beta is the local temperature. Um, so, local temperature drives beta. Similarly, local temperature. Uh, drives a beta, and then the white daisy. Oh, what did I do wrong? Nothing terribly wrong. White daisies. Oh yeah, white daisies increase albedo. albedo. This is what I did wrong. I put my and black daisies uh, drain albedo. So there we go. Um, you can do it as stocks and flows as well. Oh wait, <laughs> yes, just one minor problem. Got to comp complete the loops here. All right, so there we go. Daisy world as stock and flow. Uh, it's tempting to give it a title, but I don't think I will. So the main points. Let's uh, 
I used to listen to BBC World Service decades ago uh, when they would say, once again, these are the main points. So the main points, Daisy World can adjust itself to uh, changes in the luminosity because uh, the growth factors of the black and the white um, daisies have this uh, um, characteristic. I haven't stressed it yet, but a main point here, I have talked often about local. These local, small local impacts can affect the overall functioning of the systems system. And finally, Daisy World is an example of a system um, that's self-regulating. And one of the characteristics of such a system, one of the things that makes that happen, is that it has multiple Nonlinear, nonlinear matters actually, but we're not doing the math, so don't worry about it. Nonlinear, multiple nonlinear feedback loops. And that's this here and this here. All right, so um, I've got a fair amount of editing to do. Uh, uh, um, my ups and downs uh, got quite confused on a number of occasions. Um, and um, again, this is an example, so finally, this is an example of homeostatic equilibrium. Um, this planet finds its op the, the, the optimum temperature for the species um, that are living on it. All right, tune in, uh, tune in, same bad time, same bad channel.